Good afternoon and welcome to this session. My name is Vittorio Manente and I'm the Managing Director of Alpha Growth Capital. Today I will present our approach to quantitative investments and in the second part of this presentation I will show our end of the year outlook of the S&P 500. And before deep diving into uh, this presentation I would like you to read this disclaimer. So in this presentation, uh, I will give a lot of information on our, our approach to quantitative investment, investing, and I will also provide a, an outlook on where the market might go by the end of 2021. If you now decide to take these informations and invest accordingly to what is presented, and you lose money, this is done at your own risk. And with this said, let me start by giving you an overview of the firm. The firm was born in 2017 and the idea was to break the trade-off between the risk and return of the available financial products for retail investors. We're based in Wallerau in Switzerland and we are a quant management firm and we're using a statistical approach to take investment decisions and generate alpha. By background we're engineers and we're using a lot of mathematical tools to solve all the challenges that are associated with investments. We have one flagship investment strategy, which is called Next Alpha, and we provide it to professional and retail clients using separately managed accounts. As I just mentioned, our flagship strategy is called Next Alpha. We invest using ETFs, and these ETFs are representative of um, North American equities. US Treasury bonds, metals, and agricultural commodities. We use models to take investment decisions to understand in which asset classes we need to be invested in, how much money to allocate in it to each trade, and at what price we need to enter and exit a trade. We accepted this strategy in November 2017, and since then we have outperformed the market. In this time frame, the S&P 500, which is our benchmark index, has returned 70.21%, and our strategy, Next Alpha, has returned 136%. If we look at the numbers on an annual, annualized basis, the strategy has returned nearly 26%. We have only 16% correlation with the equity market, and they have a certain ratio of uh, 1.55. Next Alpha evolve over time, and the reason why it evolved because we constantly we try to find a way to take better and better investment decisions. We have always been investing in uncorrelated uncorrelated assets, but what has changed over time is the way we select the assets to be invested in, and at what time. So at the beginning when we started, our decisions were based on momentum and we then noticed that if we do that, we, are, we can experience some drawdown. So we have complemented our momentum based approach with some kind of smart exit signals. We have then implemented machine learning because it was a way for us to decrease the drawdown without penalizing the annualized return. But in the March of 2020, what we realized is that machine learning knows as much things as have happened in the past. As soon as we have a situation that has not happened before, then machine learning is as good as a human in taking investment decisions. So we, we decided to make our system more robust. So we have transitioned from machine learning to a statistical approach. And in our view, according to what we have experienced in the last 12 months, statistics is much more robust than what we have experienced in the past. And our hedge <coughs> in taking investment decision is volatility. We are looking at the price action in the volatility domain. We are not looking at the price as a function of time. We use volatility, as I mentioned before, to understand how much money to allocate in each trade. So if the volatility is high, we kind of go 
100% into the trade and so if the volatility is low if our volatility is in the mid range most of our money are in cash we use a volatility to decide how much hedge to use against um, a possible market drop and we use volatility to understand how to set our exit and entry price level by doing that we have experienced much lower drawdown and increase in the sharp duration of our strategy without penalizing our annualized return in terms of risk management we use the diversification primarily as a tool to reduce the drawdown we have a modular approach which means that we use the same investment methodologies applied to different asset classes once we have a well-defined and optimized strategy for each uh, in for each asset class then we merge these strategies together and at the end we can have an overall strategy with lower drawdown improved consistency and similar returns and let me illustrate this with an example so let's say that we have three asset classes equities treasury bonds and gold and we simply buy all these three assets then we have the performances that you can see on this table if we then we take our approach and we apply to these three asset classes as you can see we can reduce the drawdown and in some cases improve the annualized return we, mer we merge these strategies together and at the end our maximum drawdown is substantially reduced our sharp ratio more than double and we have a pretty similar annualized return In the second part of this presentation, I would like to provide our outlook on where the equity market might uh, end 2021. As I mentioned before, we are a quantitative investment firm, but despite we use this type of outlook to understand the health of the market and overall have an idea on what might happen in the future. So to provide this, uh, the, this outlook, we have, we have a model that can uh, tell the fair price of the, the S&P 500 as a function of uh, the US GDP, money stock index, consumer price index, and the spread between treasury and corporate yield. The model is reactive, it's not predictive, it means that it's it's not a crystal ball and it's quite useful to to basically to to create outlooks based on a given set of assumptions and the, those, those are, this, this is the model so the dark blue line is basically it's the actual data and the gray line the dark gray line is what the model predicts as a fair price of the s p 500 so we have developed 24 uh, scenarios and to develop these scenarios we have to have some assumptions in terms of uh, the main parameters that are feeding the model so in terms of gdp we made a couple of assumptions the first one is that the gdp grows at the current historical growth rate and the second assumption is that the gdp grows a little bit faster 25 percent faster than its uh, than its historical growth when it comes to the money stock index we have had similar assumptions so we we, we saw a case in which uh, the money stock index grows at its uh, historical growth rate and in uh, the second case we assume that m2 grows at the same rate as it has done in 2021 in terms of uh, yield spread between corporate bond and treasury bonds we had we have developed three different uh, scenarios the first one is that the yield is going to to decrease over time at the same rate as after the march 2020 spike the second case that we look into was to assume that the spread is gonna go down for the March high at the same rate as the 12 months pre preceding the COVID crash 
and <coughs> the, the, the last case that we assumed was that the spread was going to move at the same rate as it did during the 70s during the stagflation period. The last parameter is the consumer price index. We look at two different cases over here, the, the business as usual growth and um, the growth at the same rate as during the 70s. So um, <coughs> we create a full factorial of all these assumptions and at the end we put together a total of 24 different cases. What we, what we did next was to take all these 24 cases and feed it to our model. And when we calculate what the model predicts, what we see is that by the end of the year, we can expect the S&P 500 to be valued between 3400 and 3800 points. And what does this mean is that currently the market might be 10 to 20% over value than its, uh, than its fair price. So the next question we might have is, uh, is, it, is this going to happen? Should we expect a market crash between 10 and 20% in the next three to four months? And the short answer is we don't know because um, as it happens during the 2000s, as, as long as there are buyers, the market can stay overvalued for quite significant time. And this concludes my presentation. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for your attention and if you have any questions I will be glad to take them.